Hey, what's going on, everybody? <clears throat> I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are having a good day. I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from Your Black World, my Black Business School. And um, I wanted to go live for a little bit because uh, I uh, just arrived. I'm actually uh, driving through Indianapolis just for a day, though, uh, on my way back home to visit my family. And I, um, I was uh, really moved tonight by uh, what I saw uh, from Vicki Dillard. I saw Vicki Dillard did a really interesting video today um, about this uh, lady that is on this show that you might have seen called Insecure. Um, the, the show Insecure was one of those shows created by uh, that one lady. Um, she's really she's really smart, really good filmmaker. I forgot her name. Um, somebody give me her name. You'll know what I'm talking about because she started on, on YouTube and whatnot. Um, what's her? I can't remember her name. But anyway, uh, anyway, so Issa Rae, Issa Rae, that's her name. Yeah, so Issa Rae show Insecure uh, there's apparently this actress named Amanda Seals who, you know, just uh, really likes to engage a lot on social media. Amanda likes to get out there and do a lot of stuff. I don't know how Issa Rae feels about, you know, her social media engagement or how HBO feels about it. But, you know, uh, some of it's a little bit disturbing, um, you know, because I, I think that for her, for Amanda, I think she sees uh, social media engagement as her opportunity to be you know, an activist, you know, mostly on behalf of other black feminists and stuff like that. <clears throat> and uh, I'm all for activism. I really am. You know, I'm all for people speaking their truth. I'm all for people doing the right thing. I'm all for people standing up for justice and fairness and truth and equality and everything else. Uh, what I'm not for is, you know, when, you know, when there's just a big old lie, you know, when you're, when you're backing up lies that really ultimately become white supremacists. Uh, hey, what's going on, Keela? Good to see you. Thank you, Keela, for telling, for giving me the, <laughs> the name. I couldn't remember what it was. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and, you know, at the end of the day, there's a lot of stuff that's um, kind of disturbing in terms of what recently happened with her. I don't know if you guys followed it, but there's a whole situation with her involving a guy named Myron Roll. Myron Roll is um, a black man who happened to, he used to play in the NFL. Uh, and I, I followed his career because I remember that he turned down the NFL to go to medical school or to go do a road scholarship. I think that's what it was, which which was pretty unprecedented. I mean, you don't you just don't hear a lot of black men, you know, doing things like that. And um, and so, uh, you know, it, it, it's uh, it was it was pretty, pretty impressive. And, uh, you know, it, it, uh, it was something that I paid attention to. And this, this brother, as smart as he is athletic, and he was very athletic. He was actually an All-American at Florida State. He, uh, you know, just to make it to the NFL, you got to be good. I think he might have been all pro while he was in the NFL. I'm not 100 percent sure. And, um, and he, he just, you know, worked really hard. He, he, you know, he lived the model life for the most part that I know about. And, um, and then Amanda decides she wants to uh, smear him which, you know, some people, I guess, need to be smeared maybe because they did something that they shouldn't have done. Uh, but in this case, it was a problem. And I'm going to kind of break down the reasons why. Um, before I do that, please uh, hit the thumbs up button. If you're watching on YouTube, please hit that thumbs up button, hit the share button, subscribe button. Also, I'm about to send out a text to let people know we're live. And uh, if you want to get um, uh, notifications when, we, when I go live, just text my name, text voice. To 31996, 31996. Just text the word voice to 31996 and you get a notification when I go live. Um, give me one second here. All right, so I'm going to send this out right now uh, to everybody that is on the text list. And so uh, if you want, want to be on the text list, just text my name voice to 31996. All right, so so here's what, um, what went down. So Amanda goes on The Breakfast Club. Um, and she uses the, the platform of the Breakfast Club uh, to, I guess, you know, solve a grievance that she had. You know, I guess she did it, um, you know, because she had some bone to pick with Myron Roll and said, I, you know, I'm going to ruin you. And that's what people do sometimes. I mean, you hear people say, I'll, I'll ruin your whole career. I'll ruin you. And it's easy to do that now because you can just lie and make something up and especially about a man, you know, men, women don't get in trouble for having sex. Like there's no way I can ruin a woman's career by saying, oh, well, she's a hoe or, oh, she fucked five guys or, oh, she has an STD. Like I can't, a man can't do that. that you know, so that power of the Me Too movement is a power 
that's been granted pretty much to women to destroy men. Uh, even though when these men are having sex, they're having sex with women or most of the time they're having sex with women because men that have sex with men, they don't they don't get hit hard either. The, the gay community is pretty protected from the whole Me Too fiasco as well. So uh, gay men don't get hit. Women don't get hit. But heterosexual men, uh, they, they pretty much want to take you out. They want they want to see you gone. They want to see you pretty much as good as dead. Um, they have no use for you. Uh, and so. My role, apparently, I, I believe he's heterosexual. I assume so, um, and uh, and I, I assume he's attractive to the ladies. I mean, my God, the man, you know, it looks like he could be on the cover of a magazine. He was an NFL uh, superstar, and he's a neurosurgeon at Harvard University, or he got accepted into the neurosurgery program at Harvard University. I assume that that makes you a candidate, you know, for <laughs> for some sexual activity. I assume you know, that that might make you an alpha male. I assume that that might make you attractive to some women, right? And, and I and God bless him for it. You know, God bless him. Uh, but at the same time, I hope he's wise enough to understand that getting that much female attention ain't always good for a man. Just for you brothers out there, you know, you might think that you want all these women chasing you, but believe me, uh, you're lucky if, they're, if, if you're not getting a lot of women chasing you because in the age of the Me Too movement, uh, it's like, it's almost like what Malcolm X used to say. Malcolm X used to say, the white man will sell you the liquor bottle and then he'll lock you up for being drunk. He'll sell you the liquor bottle and then lock you up for being drunk. And what that basically means is that people will tempt you. People will offer you stuff. They'll offer you whatever it is that, that they want you to have or uh, you know, they want you to be caught with just so they can catch you with it. They offer, you know, like, like even with, you know, there's the whole, even the whole conversation with R. Kelly. Again, I'm not, def I, I want to make it clear. I don't defend R. Kelly because I don't like that guy. I, I just don't, I never liked R. Kelly. I never supported his music. But, you know, there were people, you can't, you can imagine scenarios where there were people who said, we know he likes young girls. We're going to offer him young girls so that we can catch him with young girls and we can get some money out of this Negro. We could take him down. Uh, and if you don't think that this sort of thing happens all throughout this country, you out of your damn mind. Uh, I, I talked to once I, I had a woman when I worked at AOL Black Voices years ago when I was writing for AOL Black Voices, I was writing these articles and they would be read by 100,000 people. And uh, there was a lady who uh, called me and she was a um, uh, I asked her, what is your profession? What do you do? And she said she was a butt doctor. I said, what is a butt doctor? Or no, she wasn't a butt doctor. She said she worked for a butt doctor. That's what it was. I said, what? A butt doctor? And she said, yeah, you know, the, the doctors that come from other countries and give women butt injections, like strippers and stuff. And I was like, really? Oh, that's a whole industry? She said, yeah, there's a lot of money that's, that, that we make doing illegal butt injections. And she told me a whole interesting story about three young ladies that had a, basically a gang. It was like a gang of three. And there was uh, one that was 15, one that was 17, one that was 19. And the whole thing was they noticed that men have a weakness when it comes to sex. They noticed that you can get money out of men by, catch, by, by offering them sex and catching them in compromising situations. So all of them have fake IDs. This is, I'm not making the story up. I'm not excusing. By the way, I'm not excusing any ridiculous behavior by any man. I'm just giving you all the for real. Y'all know how I am. I just like to talk about the truth. And so this story, so, so this story freaked me out. She said that all the girls had fake IDs and all of them, they would keep records. They would just look in the paper and talk to people and find out whenever a rapper or a baller was coming into town. So if you were an athlete, you were a target. If you were a famous actor, you were a target. If you were um, you know, a rapper, you were a target. And what were they targeting them you with? It wasn't like they were targeting people you know, who were hooked on heroin to offer them heroin. They were offering them something that is very natural for, for all human beings, they were offering them sex. You know, now we live in a society where we have criminalized male sexual activity. We have somehow acted as though a man who has sex with a woman is somehow a criminal. Like that somehow he's bad, he's a predator, he's almost as bad as a rapist. Uh, but, you know, re remember, God made us sexual for a reason. The reason we all exist, the reason all of you are here right now, the reason Cold World and Sully Man and Faithful Seeker and Selena and Paris and, and 50, 50 and Zynga, the reason you guys are here right now is because somebody had sex. So I, you know, I think that we must be thoughtful about allowing, you know, those who want to socially engineer society to create a world where somehow a man caught having sex is somehow a terrible man. 
So they were, but but anyway, so these young ladies would would, uh, would schedule when the jump offs or when the men were going to come into town. The men, the rappers and stuff, they had reputations. They knew which rappers, you know, that like like the fast women and all that stuff. So they would offer him what he was looking for. They all had fake IDs. So if the rapper said, "Oh, well, let me see your ID. You don't look 18." They all had IDs. They'd be like, "I'm 18. Look at my driver's license, right?" And so what they would do is they would get the guys back at the hotel. And uh, a couple of little, a couple of hustles they ran. One was they would do the obvious, which is get you vulnerable, get you naked, and then have guys waiting outside to come in and rob you. As soon as you got naked, they come in and take all your money, right? But then the, the other hustle was they would um, put a date rape drug in the guy's drink. They would put a date rape drug in his drink, and he goes to sleep. When he goes to sleep, well, then that's when they um, get the 15-year-old. They put her in the bed, and they take a picture of the man in the bed with a 15 year old. Now he didn't have to have sex with her, but he's in the bed with her. And that picture was enough, you know, enough evidence. And so when the guy woke up, they would say, we're gonna um, send these pictures to, if you don't give us $10,000, we're gonna send these pictures to your uh, team, to your wife and to the media. You know, now for some people, they feel like, well, if you're cheating, you know, on your wife, or if you're sleeping with a girls younger than your, yourself, you know, that, that young or under, you know, under the age of 25 or whatever, that you deserve whatever you get. Um, and uh, and so basically, because of that, you know, we sort of just put men who are who have who are have natural sexual energy, we put them in a box, it like almost like you're a rapist, almost like you're a molester or like you're a bad person. So it's very shameful. So we shame the men, you know, just for for doing what everybody does, just for having sex. And so um, anyway, this hustle worked for them. And one of them, in fact, one of the guys that got caught up in it. Uh, from what she was telling me was Lawrence Taylor, the football player. Now, Lawrence had some habits. Lawrence, you know, got into drugs. He, he liked the hookers. He, he got in all kinds of bad situations. But what they um, what happened was when they took Lawrence uh, Taylor down, the one of the little girls was sitting next to Gloria Allred, looking as innocent as she could be. Gloria Allred was in for the kill, in for the money. And, the you know, the girl was like crying and talking about how terrible it was and and basically playing along with the role. And she said, she said, Boy, Dr. Boyce, don't believe none of that. She said, I know that little girl. That little girl got all kinds of hustle. And basically, she has robbed, set people up to be killed. She has done all kinds of stuff. And I was like, what? No. You know, and so the point is not to not to let anybody off the hook, not to let it make it appear that anybody's an angel, but to really say that, you know, that we got to look at the environment. You got to look at the whole picture. You got to look at the big picture of this space that they're trying to create. Um, at what point is it OK for a man to have sex and not be seen as a criminal? You know, people go to work every day. More pe so A lot of people spend more time at work than they spend anywhere else. You spend more time at work than you spend anywhere else. So most people, a lot of people meet their wives or their husbands or their girlfriends or their boyfriends at their job. You date people at your job, men and women. So do you really want to have a workplace where every man who is you know, who has a decent job, a decent income is afraid to even tell you that he's attracted to you because he's scared that he's going to be put in, um, you know, in the category of being a predator. You know, I, I think about this. You, you, you might have a situation where a woman hits up a man and then somehow the narrative can be rewritten that that somehow he manipulated her, he tricked her, he played a mind control trick on her, which which is not good for women, by the way, because it makes women look stupid. It makes women look like dumb little flowery cupcakes who can who are just who well, we can just hypnotize you and and say, say, hey, say, lay down, bitch, take off your panties, you know, and y'all do whatever we say, like, like literally, like, like it makes women. Condoleezza Rice actually said that she said, I support the Me Too movement to a point, but I don't want to create a situation that makes women look like weak little cupcakes. Like, like if a man tells you that he thinks you're cute or a man uh, says, ooh, I, I like your ass, you're going to break down, have nervous breakdowns for the next 20 years and act like you couldn't possibly function because you were so traumatized that he told you that you were attracted. Like, get the hell up out of here with that shit. That's stupid. So anyway, I'm going to move in. I'm going to talk a little bit more about Amanda, Amanda Seals and, and, and kind of dive into this a little bit. Um, and uh, but before I do that, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're on YouTube, please hit that thumbs up button. We need that. That really helps us to let people know about uh, the podcast, let people know about the channel. 
So please hit the thumbs up button. Please share. Uh, I want to say hello to everybody on Instagram. Instagram is the real Boyce Watkins. Twitter is Dr. Boyce Watkins one. Dr. Boyce Watkins one. We keep it hot on all those spaces. And uh, so please hit that thumbs up button. Please hit the subscribe button, share button, and all that. And I'll say what's up to Ados. I see Ados is in here. Um, you know, a, a American descendants of slaves. That's what the movement stands for. And I support that movement. Uh, and I want to make sure I make it clear that I support that that whole ideology. I got Dr. Claude Anderson coming in here tomorrow. We're going to talk about ADOS. We're going to talk about reparations, all of that. So make sure you subscribe so that I can notify you when Dr. Claude Anderson goes uh, live with me. Uh, you can text the word BOYCE, B O Y C E, to 31996 to get a notification. Okay, so here's the deal. Um, so Amanda Seals, uh, apparently, you know, and Amanda Seals has been questionable for a long time in terms of some of the things she says. She blames black men for everything, all the ills of the world. I think she blamed black men for Trump's election, which I'm like, I don't blame black men. I blame the Democrats. If the Democrats had, had not screwed over black people during the Obama presidency, then more black people would have showed up to the polls. They they do what's best for their families. Black people do what's best for their families. So you can't get mad at black people for doing what white people do. You know, if you believe in equality, you, you know, we're going to do what's best for us. <clears throat> so a lot of people decided that voting for, you know, the Democratic candidate wasn't going to really improve their lives. So, but of course, she, I think she blamed black men for that. Uh, I heard her blame black men for something else. I forgot what else. She, well, I forgot what it was, but she came, she came off kind of as a, what I call a predatory feminist. A predatory feminist is a woman that is scorned so badly, scorned so badly, maybe because she's been rejected, maybe because her daddy you know, left her when she was little, maybe because uh, men have hurt her feelings and didn't want her, the man she wanted didn't want her back, that they have spent their lives going through uh, it, and, and using what I call the bitter chick revenge stick. They're using the Me Too movement. They're using this movement, which started off with a noble purpose. They're using this movement as an opportunity to go get revenge on men that did not want them, right? And so rather than accepting the fact that he don't want you, you know, you you maybe you slept with him and you regret it, because now you're feeling, feeling kind of dirty, you're feeling kind of bad about yourself. You instead are looking for every avenue to blame men for all your problems. Think about this. Think about it. She did a whole video blaming black men for this, black men for that. So if she's blaming black men for who's in the White House, she, you know she's blaming black men for what's going on in her personal life. You know, it's seriously, she has, she you, the, the rhetoric, the nature of her tone is one that says black men are the scum of the earth. And they've never done anything good for me. And uh, and you have that segment of the community, just like you have people that, you know, that they hang out here, brothers out here that hate black women. They hate their hate because they hate their mama or they hate some woman that broke their heart. So they run around saying every negative thing they could possibly think of about black women. And and and, and, and that's not appropriate either. And so she's a predatory feminist. And the word predatory is appropriate because uh, you're preying on the vulnerability of the black male to use that to pursue your own personal objectives, your own personal agenda. You're preying on the black male because you know that the white man already got it out for us. You know that the white man already wants to see us dead. You know that the white man been trying to lynch us since we got off the damn slave ship. So you're standing next to the white man. A lot of women like that, they end up marrying white guys and shit. And you're standing next to the white man, partnering with the white man to destroy the black man. You know, so that predatory feminism where you're using the bitter chick revenge stick to go around and just just falsely accuse whoever you want and make things up and and label people as predators without any evidence whatsoever is, is your weapon of choice. Now, here's the thing. So Amanda Seals goes on The Breakfast Club and starts telling this elaborate story about some guy who um, who said who said things that were inappropriate to her on a text message. She didn't say what he said. She didn't show any proof. She didn't provide any evidence. I mean, my God, who my how dare we ask these women to provide evidence, right? That that's offensive. You're offending me. You're being a sexist by asking me to provide logic and evidence. Like I'm not, you're asking me to be logical. That's not fair. You're a sexist. You're you're a man pig, right? Whatever. So she didn't provide any evidence. She didn't provide any proof. She just went on Breakfast Club and starts talking about um about this, about this man that turned out to be Myron Roll. Now pay attention. This is a man who um, I, I can read you all his bio. His bio is, impress is impressive as shit. This man got accepted into the neurosurgery program at Harvard. Do you know how hard that is to do? I'm not talking about getting into Harvard as an undergrad. That, that's easy <clears throat> compared to this. It is hard as hell. Let me break it down for y'all right quick. When I got into Columbia University and Ivy League School for my PhD, 
they had, I think, 300 applicants for eight spots. 300 applicants for eight spots, NYU. NYU, I wanted to go to NYU. I did not get into NYU because they had 400 applicants, eight spots. I was ranked number nine on the list. I was number nine. So I didn't get to go to NYU, but I did get into Columbia, another Ivy League school, very good institution. It's hard as hell to get into these programs. Myron Roll ain't just a doctor. Myron Roll is a super doctor. Like he's he's like if you take all the doctors, which are pretty damn smart people, most physicians are are highly educated, more educated than probably about 99 percent of the population. And you take all the doctors. He's up here with with the top doctors. You don't get into the neurosurgery. It's harder. I bet it's harder to get into the neurosurgery program at Harvard than it is to get into the NFL. And y'all know how hard it is to get into the NFL. So this man, who I think is about 33 years old, has spent his life, he's dedicated his life to busting his ass, breaking through barriers, doing things that, that very few black people have ever done. And you're gonna go ruin everything. You're gonna go shape him and label him a predator. Not You, you didn't say he's a creep or he's an asshole. Those things aren't illegal. You didn't lay. You didn't say, "Oh, he's a he a player. He he liked too many of the ladies, right? Like he's a he's a dog girl." You didn't do that. No, you want to label him a predator, which is a criminal offense, by the way. You're label. You're taking one of the most accomplished black men in this country, and reducing him to the level of a criminal. You're you're doing all this because your ass ain't accomplished nothing except getting a couple parts on Issa Rae's show and you you got this interview on The Breakfast Club and you think you're somebody, you're gonna destroy 20 years of hard work this man has put in with some lies that you're gonna just spout out of your out of that damn hole in your head called a mouth that you, you just spout in this bullshit that, that has no proof, no backing, no nothing to destroy this black man in front of a whole national audience. What the fuck is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? Because don't you understand that when you open your mouth and you label this black man, he's already he's already he's already on a tightrope as it is. He, they the white folks already don't even want him there. The white folks already looking at him funny, questioning whether he has the credentials to actually be a surgeon. You 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 can't be a neurosurgeon at Harvard, right? That's what they do. They, you know what I'm talking about. He's already dealing with all of that, and a woman that looks like him, a black woman steps up and wants to destroy all of that and, and slaps him with a label that can't be easily erased. You tell the whole nation that you believe that he's a sexual predator and you provide no truth whatsoever, no proof whatsoever, none, not one lick of evidence, nothing. I saw nothing, I saw no, you know, again, if he's texting you crazy things on text message, where's the screenshot of the text message? If he, uh, you know, and then she comes back and she says something like, oh, well, then I started hearing from from other women and I heard from other women and, and it was very disturbing. And one woman said that on a date, he answered the door naked. OK, OK, if he did that, then, yeah, that's a problem. But OK, well, who are these people? Who are these people? Again, again if you're going to destroy a man's life, he has a right to face his accusers. If you're going to destroy, if you're going to put him out there, you need to get out there with him. If you're going to put somebody out there, you need to put yourself out there as the person that's putting somebody else out there. You can't sit and hide. Like, oh, I, I'm protected. I'm just a tough dude. I'm just a little vulnerable, vulnerable woman. They can't, they can't. I'm afraid they're going, the world is going to hurt me. But go kill that nigga over there. Go kill them niggas. Go kill but no, officer, I can't answer any questions. I was afraid. No, but go lynch a nigga tomorrow. Go kill these niggas, all of them. That nigga and that nigga and that nigga. So you up here talking about you you timid and vulnerable and scared and, and afraid and all this other stuff, but you out here aggressively putting your dick on the table and going around trying to destroy every black man that you see. Again, the bitter chick revenge stick. You up here running around going out trying to, I mean, really doing aggressive shit. Like it's very aggressive to go out and talk about people. Like, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you how aggressive it is to talk about people you dated and talk about them in detail on a Twitter account where you got, you know, 300,000 followers. I'm gonna tell you how aggressive that is. I'm gonna tell you how hard that is to do. You know how hard that is to do? 
It's so hard that I can't even imagine myself doing that. I thought about that and I said, man, I've had relationships too. Everybody has. And I've had some women that have just done me dirty. I have had, I've, did, I've been in situations where I was like, boys, why did you even think that this woman was going to do the do right by you? You saw the signs and, and she ain't nothing but a dirty dog. I've, I've gone through that. I've gone through the heartbreak. And do you know that y'all will never know any of those stories unless I have to tell it? I will never go through and tell y'all, yeah, oh yeah, I was fucking her and and then this happened and then she did. And let me tell you what nasty shit she did in the bedroom. I mean, this girl sent me pictures of herself, you know, doing blah, 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 blah. Like I, like I would not do that, especially to a woman who has a reputation to protect. I'm not going to go and point out maybe some woman I had a relationship years ago who's a corporate executive who's got a stellar reputation in the industry and be like, Man, let me tell y'all, let me tell y'all what she does. Let me tell y'all what freaky stuff she does in the bedroom. And let me tell you about the man that she was with. She a hoe. She ain't nothing but a hoe. Like that's really what that's really what they're doing, right? Well, you literally think about this. You you're taking a private moment that you had with another person, and maybe you didn't get what you wanted. Maybe they dumped you. Maybe the sex was bad. Maybe you you were disgusted by something that they did and you walked away. And, but you're taking that private moment. And you're talking about it in detail in public. How many of y'all would want people to do that to you? Since the ladies, I'm gonna ask the ladies, how would you feel, ladies, if every man you was ever with felt empowered enough, felt like it was empowering to go and describe why they think you ain't nothing but a nasty hoe? And then tell people in detail exactly what you did in the bedroom. Answer that question for me. Somebody tell me. What kind of man would that be? What, how much respect would you have for somebody who does that? You wouldn't have any respect for that. Because let's just be clear. People will always have sex. Human beings have been having sex for millions of years. It ain't going to stop tomorrow. Sex is happening right now. And a lot of the sex is happening and y'all don't have no idea. We don't have no idea who's having sex with who because people don't announce that shit. People don't get on Twitter and talk about who they who they, who they fucked last night because hey, you know, a lot of people have sex with people they're not supposed to be having sex with. Y'all know this. We know this. We know this. So so this this whole idea of taking regular experiences, something, you know, again, this ain't, I'm not talking about rape. I'm not talking about you know, stuff that's really creepy, bad, terrible. No, no, no. In fact, if it's rape, then it, it, it should, there's a police report, right? So then it's a different level. It's a different, it's, it's get, it's, it gets taken up to the next, the next level in the, in the company, right? It gets, uh, it's, it's one of those um, requests that gets expedited, right? It gets expedited to the top of the list if it's rape. But I'm, I'm not talking, the thing is the Me Too movement ain't, it usually ain't talking about rape or assault. It's talking about like, raunchy shit that somebody said to you in a text. That's where this all started. Amanda Seals had, had no direct evidence that Byron, Myron Roll, excuse me, Myron Roll, that Dr. Myron Roll, Dr. Roll, let's call it, let's give this man his respect. I believe he's Dr. Roll. If he's doing his neurosurgery residency. I assume he's Dr. Roll. There, she had no direct evidence whatsoever, no direct experience whatsoever that Dr. Roll was doing anything predatory toward women. Anything predatory. And then go deeper than that. She's citing these messages that she got from other women saying, oh, yeah, he's a creep. Yeah, he's an asshole. She said, that's one thing she mentioned. She said, she said yeah, my girlfriend said he's an asshole. And I'm like, okay, are we sending people to prison for being assholes now? Are we destroying people's reputations for being assholes? Because if, if we're starting to lock up assholes, I'd like to make a list of asshole women that I've interacted with. And, and let's start with that list. Let's go, go get them, officers. Send them to jail. Go destroy them right now. Assholes are everywhere. And there's not one. Sp Last time I checked, God did not make all the assholes one gender. There are assholes all over the place. And being an asshole is not the same as being a predator. When you label him as a predator, you're pretty much calling that black man a criminal. And unless you've got evidence of him engaging in criminal behavior, you probably need to shut the fuck up. You need to go sit down, go sit over there with Issa Rae, do your little corny ass show, 
and just shut up. Just stop it. Just stop it. Again, if I ever see any evidence or proof that Myron Rowe assaults somebody, if he ever decides he wants to ruin his Harvard credentials and go and rape a woman or, or even try to rape somebody or even punch a woman in the face or whatever, I'm with you. I'm going to ride with you 100%. Lock him up. Deal with him. But if you're trying to tell me, oh, well, he sent me something that was just inappropriate via text, you don't even provide a screenshot of the text so we can decide what's appropriate and what's not. And then also, I've never seen anybody get assaulted on a text message. I've never seen a predator uh, tackle their prey on a text. Ain't nobody never got raped on a text message. I'm sorry. And grown ass women should know how to know how to just block your ass and say, I'm not talking to you no more. Aren't you? Are you a grown ass woman or are you a little girl? Like what? What the fuck is what is wrong with you that you somehow think that because somebody sends you a text message that shows maybe maybe he maybe he's horny maybe he's whatever men been getting horny since horny was invented and and the truth be told there's some women out here that get super horny we know ladies get horny too so so and so I don't really understand this idea that somehow we're now equating we're now equating what some would consider to be an inappropriate text message with predatory behavior and sexual assault and rape. How did that happen? How did that happen? And let's just be clear about those text messages. See, one person's creepy, inappropriate message is somebody else's happy invitation to have sex. Like, let's just be clear. Like, like a lot of people don't even know when they send you, when they make a pass at you, when a man or a woman makes a pass at you, they don't know how you're going to label them. They're like, well, if I if I try to kiss her, she's either going to be very happy that I'm kissing her or she's going to want to call the police. What do I do? So at the end of the day, you know, what are are you a little girl? Like what what the hell? Like you ain't 12? You're not in middle school, goddammit. Like if he if he if the text message made you uncomfortable, then walk away. But but I'm gonna tell you why the text message wasn't that bad because she kept on talking to the guy. She admitted. She admitted that she was that she was thirsting for his ass two years before. And let's just be clear. Myron, have y'all seen this guy? Have y'all seen this brother? I, this man is the epitome of an alpha male. He is, he was like an all-American athlete. He is a he's he, he's handsome enough to be on a magazine. He's a Rhodes Scholar and he's a neurosurgeon at Harvard. So I would imagine that he's gotten his fair share of pussy. I would imagine that he's gotten his fair share of women offering themselves to him. And that does not make him a predator if he was sleeping with the women that were offering themselves to him. That makes him human. That makes it natural. That's what happens in the forest. The alpha male bear gets all the female bears chasing after him. And next thing you know, he's having sex and babies are being born. That's how mother nature and genetics works. That's how Darwinian survival of the fittest works. That's what happens. That's why when you watch the Nature Channel and you watch, uh, there was a little doe. I was watching the Nature Channel. There's a little doe who was in heat. She was in heat and she knew her body was telling her that she was horny. We call it horny, but really her body was telling her she needed to get pregnant. So she was looking to find a male to get pregnant. She's like, which one do I want to get pregnant by? So they said they were narrating this. They were like, so watch the doe as she approaches the group of male bucks. Now, the, here's the thing about the male bucks. The male bucks were set up where the ones that were the strongest were closer to the middle because they held the territory in the middle. The weaker males were on the outskirts. So she walks up and they starting to check each other out. And of course, all the males are like, hey, girl, how you doing? Like, can, they, can I holler? They got all that toxic masculinity, right? The feminists would be so offended watching these male bucks actually do what, what they naturally do, right? They would they would probably call them all predators, but they was all trying to holler. It was like, like a girl walking up in the club looking good in a tight outfit, like, hey, how you doing? Nice to meet you. Can I buy you a drink? And she was kind of walking past them like, thank you, but no thanks. Right, so she's walking in and she's moving closer. Closer. The narrator's like, and watch as the doe, she's moving closer to the center because she wants to get closer to the alpha male. So she's getting closer. And then they're like, and as she gets closer, the options get more and more tempting. And she starts taking her time. Like, like first she's running past the scrubs. Like TLC said, said, no scrubs. I don't want no scrubs. Right. She didn't want no scrubs. She didn't want the guy on the outside. She didn't want the weak men. She wanted the ones that were strong. So as she got closer, she would take more time getting to know each potential suitor. And, but she really was trying to get the guy in the middle. 
She wasn't thinking about if he had, you know, babies, mamas uh, everywhere or or if he had, you know, if he had a girl, you know, in California. Uh, she wasn't thinking about, you know, like, like, well, you know, is this is this right? Is he going to call me tomorrow? She wasn't thinking about all that. She was like, I want to have uh, a baby. I needed my in biological instincts. Remember, she didn't go to she didn't go to Harvard. She didn't go to college or nothing. She just wasn't being doing what a deer would do. And her body was instinctually telling her on a microscopic level that I want to mate with the male who has the best genes so that my offspring have the maximum ability to survive. The, the highest probability of their survival comes from me mating with the strongest male in this group. So she works her way right to the middle. She picks the guy that's right in the middle, who's holding the territory right in the center, and he literally gets her pregnant right there in the club, right there in the middle of everything. It was the craziest thing I ever saw. So Myron Roll is one of those guys who would be the buck that's in the middle of the pack. He, you know, so Amanda Seal doing what probably a, 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 a hundred million women have already done. Amanda Seal was talking to him, trying to holler trying to get some, trying to get a little closer to him, right? Now, she's playing it off later on. Like, I think she's playing it off. Like, oh, well, you know, he then said, can we, uh, I'd like to see you sooner. And, or something like that. I think he said, I think that she, she, he asked when she was coming to Boston. And she said, I, I don't know when. And he said, well, I'd like to see you sooner. And then she's like, well, that, I think she's basically saying like, that was creepy behavior. And I'm like, what's creepy about a man saying, I'd like to see you? Like that, are you serious right now? Is that what it is? Like, are we going to just lock a black man up for everything? Why don't we make a law that says black men should just go to jail for breathing? Like, is it, would that make you feel better? Because I'm sitting there like, so you're telling me that this man said, uh, why don't I like to see you sooner? And you are now labeling that as creepy behavior. That doesn't even sound right. Because I mean, how are you going to ever get together if you don't see each other? And so to me, I'm, I'm not believing her story. I'm not believing that, you know, that she thought it was creepy and she backed off. I'm believing that she thought about seeing him sooner. And then she started asking other people about him. And I'm not going to sit here and say Myron ain't a player. I'm not going to sit here and say Myron hasn't gotten it in. I'm not here to judge that. None of that is illegal. I do know that. As long as he ain't raping nobody, ain't none, of that, ain't none of that illegal. And remember, every time a man, a heterosexual man is having sex, there's a woman who's agreed to have sex with him. So there is no sort of predatory anything happening to me if two grown ass people decide to go into a room and do what lovers do, right? Or right. So there, there's nothing about that. But but then she, you know, she's talking about asking her girlfriends about him and then saying that all these women came forward with all these stories. And you're not really giving the nature of the stories. You're not really giving any evidence of the stories. You're not giving any names of the people that are making the accusations. So basically, you could have got a bunch of emails from a bunch of random ass trolls who wanted to smear Myron Roll and make him look like a predator. And you're going to go run with that. You're going to go run with that. So as a result, this black man who spent um, years of his life preparing to go to medical school, made his family proud. You're trying to ruin all that because you mad because he didn't like you. I guarantee you that if Myron had wanted to show up on her doorstep with a bunch of flowers and offered her some good, some good bedroom activity, she wouldn't be saying none of this. She sounds bitter and disgruntled and mad that, that this guy rejected her. And so in her mind, she's like, I'm going to make him pay. Bitter chick revenge stick, toxic feminism predatory feminism. It's predatory because you're preying on people who ain't did shit to you. Again, I don't know what Myron role. I don't know Myron role personally. I never met this man. I, you know, I don't know, you know, but, but I will say this, think about this. You must be a predator if you go and you harm somebody who has never done anything to you. Even Amanda Seal will admit that he never did anything to her. Oh, or maybe he sent a text message that, that, that made you a little queasy or made you upset, right? That, that's it. He, he ain't never done nothing to you, but you have attacked this man. You have destroyed 10, 15 years of hard work. You've ruined his reputation, made it harder for him. He got to walk through the damn hospital with all these people thinking that he's a, a predator because you've labeled him. He got to sue the shit out of you. He should sue you for everything you got. He should sue you. He, he should sue you. He should sue Issa Rae and the, and the H, HBO and the show. I, he should be suing everybody just to make a damn point. If you go around here, if we're gonna go around here just ruining people's reputations over nothing, then 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 fine, do it. 
Because I and I think that's why she's backpedaling. I think that's why she's trying to explain herself a little bit now, because I think that she's understanding that this is not a stupid black man. This is not a weak man. This is not a dumb man. This is a man. He he responded to her ass. He wrote a letter to he wrote a public statement and basically was like, you know, I mean, he, he was diplomatic. He didn't go after her that bad. He just basically said, like, what the hell is this? You know, what? The, let me see if I can find uh, hit the thumbs up button while I dig up the. Um, uh, statement by Myron Roll. I want I want to read this statement because I love it. He responded like an intelligent black man. He didn't, you know. I, I might have come out cussing, uh, but uh, but he, he he actually responded in a way that I think we should be very proud of. So let me see here. Let me see if I can find. Uh, let me see the statement. Please hit the thumbs up button while 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 I do this. Uh, okay, here's where Amanda Seals is clarifying. She's saying that she did not accuse Myra Roll of sexually harassing her. Yeah, but you did actually use the word sexual predator, um, which which is not cool. Uh, let me see if I can find his statement. I'm trying. Here we go. Roll denies accusations, uh, sexual harassment accusations. And I, I'm glad he stepped out. I'm, I'm very proud of him for handling. I think he handled it like a man, and I, re I respect him for this. Uh, he basically says, I understand that in today's world, the responsibility falls on the accused to prove themselves innocent as opposed to one's alleged accuser having to prove their claims before going public. That's his subtle way of saying that this is all fucked up. That's his way of saying, like, what happened to the idea of innocent till proven guilty? That's what he's basically saying in this statement. Uh, you know, and I'm, I'm going to, I'll translate. I don't know. I don't know exactly how to translate Myron role to y'all, but, but I'm a doctor of finance. He's a doctor. He's a real doctor. He's a medical doctor. I have a PhD in finance. And so I, I can, I might be able to interpret some of this for you. Unfortunately, I have found myself victim to these very circumstances. I like the fact that he uses the word victim because he did not do anything to this woman. He did nothing to her, but she is attacking him again, predatory, Feminism, predatory behavior. A blogger slash online personality whom I have never met in person and have only interacted with once via phone. You know, so, so they've only talked on the phone once. He's never met her in person. Uh, she recently claimed that I verbally harassed her during a phone call exchange. She furthered these claims by stating that anonymous sources have come forward and added their accounts to her narrative. Uh, let me see here. Okay, let me make myself perfectly clear. These accusations are absolutely false and should be characterized as exactly what they are. Acts of bullying, intimidation, and retaliation. I love what Myron did. Good for you, Myron. Good job, brother. Because what he did was he put the football back in her hands. He basically went back and said, I'm not just going to play defense. I'm going to subtly flip my team around and start playing offense on your ass. You're going to be the one that's backpedaling, trying to keep me from going into the end zone because I'm not just going to tackle that ass. You, I'm, I'm about to score some points on you. He comes back with very assertive language, bullying, intimidation, and retaliation. They're not used to this. The, the predatory feminists are not used to having to defend themselves they are only used to you defending yourself against their crazy accusation. They can pull any old accusation out of their ass and they got you backpedaling. And, the, and when you're only playing defense, it's very hard to score points when all you're doing is playing defense. So all you're doing is sitting back saying, I didn't do it. I'm innocent. I, I deny everything, right? No, no, no. You come back and you say, no, no, no. What you're doing is you are attacking me unfairly and you are using tactics of bullying, intimidation, and retaliation. That means that there's a reason that she decided I'm going to go after his ass. Now, listen to this. Now, this is great. A great, great letter. I just He's just showing that, that, that intelligence. You got to you gotta love. Give, I mean, give this brother a round of applause for being an intelligent black man in the face of ratchet ass, crazy ass, ridiculous, uh, immature ass women. Okay. So listen to this. He said, I have been raised to respect women and to also keep my personal affairs private as that, that is the respectful thing to do. Again, that's a subtle kabam against her to say, look, you know, like keep your shit to yourself. Like, like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna be as trashy as you and go put other people's business out on the internet. 
you know, I'm not going to, he's not going to go, my role would, is not going to get on Twitter and be like, let me make a list of all the women I got with. And let me tell you what they did in the bedroom. Let me tell you, oh, she can do this. And she does that. Oh, but she crazy. She, she nasty. She likes such, 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 such. Like, he's not going to do that. He's basically being a man and saying, like, like it, the respectful thing to do is you keep that shit to yourself. Again, unless somebody broke the law, somebody stole from you, somebody raped you, somebody kidnapped you, <clears throat> whatever it is, it, it you know, it, 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 that's a personal experience. I, I just, I don't understand that world where you throwing everybody's business out there on the internet like that anyway. It's very weird. <clears throat> in fact, in fact, here's another little tip. A little, little tip for those of you who are single, those of you who are trying to um, date other people or who are looking for somebody to date, do not ever date a person who will publicly blast the, the person that they used to be with. Anybody who will go out and publicly blast their ex is not somebody that you want to be with because that person doesn't have any integrity or any discipline. They, they are a person that if they get upset, they'll just, they'll just let the shit hang out and have both of y'all looking stupid, both of y'all looking crazy. You know, he's the one that will show up at your job and, and scream at you in front of your boss and get you fired. You know, she's the one that will go out and tell the whole neighborhood all your personal business. You can't trust your secrets with a person like that. Uh, in fact, there was one time, there was a time I remember a long, not, not too long ago, a few years ago, where I was single and I was kind of looking, thinking about, okay, you know what, you know, what am I looking for? Oh, she's kind of cute, right? So I saw this woman, I thought she was kind of pretty, blah, blah, blah. And I, I was thinking about approaching her, but but again, because these things are very, you have to be very careful with these things. So I thought about it for months about approaching her. And the thing that stopped me was one day she gets on Facebook. And she just blasts her ex-husband. I mean, just said these terrible things about him. And he threw away the money and he did this and he lied and he did this and did that. And I said, woof, I don't want nothing to do with that. Don't nobody, you don't, don't, don't date, don't date a person like that. Do not date a person who will put your business out there like that. And ladies understand that too. I think ladies really get that. Like, cause I don't think, I don't think you, you all want everybody knowing all your business. So anyway, let me keep going. Um, he says, how, so listen, so, so he says, I've been raised to respect women and to also keep my personal affairs private as that is the respectful thing to do. However, I will not sit idly by and allow someone to engage in intentional character assassination simply because I did not return their advances or wish to engage in a relationship as they may have wanted. So that's him. So he's being polite, but he's politely stomping her ass, like, like but he's doing it intellectually and verbally and she's he's much smarter than her so it's not it's not a fair fight uh but 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 he's basically saying you just you just a, you're just a bitter you're just a bitter woman you're just bitter because because i didn't want you there, there's all these women that want me and and you want me to and and i didn't select you i don't want a relationship with you right so basically that's what he's insinuating now is that true i don't know what's true what's true i don't know what's not true they you know again if amanda seals really wanted us to know everything then she would release the transcripts of all the text messages put them all out there on twitter i mean if you really want to be messy with it fine go give the bloggers and and whatever something to look at put everything up there every conversation and whatever so people can figure it out for themselves but when you come out of the room we're really that that would be stupid, but given that she's a not a smart person, I can see her doing something like that. Or if she wants to do it, she should do it all the way. Like, don't just go into a private situation and then come out with your interpretation and expect people to believe that interpretation, especially if it comes down to labeling somebody in a way that implies criminality, labeling them in a way that you know, he can't go through that hospital and do surgeries on people because they're thinking, my God, I read online that he's a sexual predator where he can't even go on a date. He can't go meet his, his future wife. He can't do anything because he's been labeled as a sexual predator. That's not cool. That's not cool at all. So anyway, let's keep going. But, but I think Amanda Seals can be labeled as a predator, uh, just in a, diff a different kind of predatory. Way. I mean, you talk about somebody who's aggressively working to destroy people's reputations for nothing, uh, that's predatory behavior. You are harming somebody who did nothing to you. And so to some extent, Amanda Seals has labeled herself as a predator in this whole process. So let's keep going. He says, um, so, so, uh, oh, so, so basically he explains that at the end, he kind of gives his version of events that you're mad because I didn't want you. And that's why you're out here talking crazy and making things up and saying all these things. Now, again, the ball then goes back into Amanda's court. 
So that means somebody said, he's an intellectual, she's a bad comedian. Yeah, she's pretty bad. I saw her reviews were pretty terrible. Um, but he's putting the ball back in her court. And I think that he's basically saying, okay, if you're going to make allegations that strong, the burden of proof is on you. The burden of proof is not on him to prove that he's not a predator. He owes you nothing. He doesn't have to prove a damn thing. You're making the accusation. You must provide the proof. She provided no proof. She gives, a, 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 she cites a bunch of anonymous text messages. They could have came from anybody. They could have came from Mars. They could have came from Russian bots. They could have came from, from, you know, her homegirls. Nobody knows where these text messages come from. And, 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 and even then, there's nothing that I heard in any of those messages that implied any kind of criminal behavior that was proven. Okay, now, I mean, you know, that story about answering the door naked, I'd like to know more about that. I'd be like, huh, tell, tell, how did that go down? Like, like you know, and, and again, that makes it sound, that it would make him sound crazy. You know, you just met a girl, you never met her before, you, you answer the door and you're standing there butt naked, or maybe he had a towel on and said, huh, here, come on, I'm getting out of the shower, uh, you know, and he's standing behind the door. You know, I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I mean, I can think of times where I've answered the door without being fully decent. And I, like if I was in a hotel and the maid knocks on the door and I look around and I say, hey, um, come back later, you know, because I'm not decent. Uh, that doesn't mean I'm inviting the maid in to have sex with me. That could mean that I am just um, trying to just get back in the shower. And, and, and the thing is that you could take even a story like that and say, oh, well, we have a story from a woman that says Dr. Boyce answered the door naked when, when a stranger opened the door. So that would sound crazy. That would sound absolutely crazy. But the fact of the matter is that if you don't have context, then you can't get to the truth. And Amanda Seals provided these stories with no context, no proof, no nothing, but is making very serious accusations. Now, if you want to accuse uh, Myron Roll of being an asshole, then fine. That's your right. It's, 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 it's all an opinion. If you want to accuse him of being a player, like like you know, with the ladies, um, all in, I mean, he, women chase him. Maybe he chases them back. Maybe he is a player. But last time I checked, that was not illegal. But when you start using words like sexual predator, you got to be careful. You know, you're destroying a man who worked hard. You know, I mean, I, I'm sure Amanda Seals wouldn't be happy if somebody went out and destroyed her little wackety wackety ass comedy career. You know, and, and, you know, went out and just, uh, you know, like, I don't know, did a Harvey Weinstein on her because because she didn't accept his sexual advances. He then goes out and starts making things up about her to where she can't get a job anywhere. She can't she gets fired at HBO. She'd be pretty upset about that. Right. So why would you do that to this man? Why would you do that to him? That ain't even right. So anyway, um, I'm looking at some of your comments. Uh, hit the thumbs up button. If you just got in here, please hit the thumbs up button. Um, I'm not going to keep you guys for too long, but I just had to address some of this. Uh, I think that there should be some rules. Uh, I think the Me Too movement, if you want to survive, I don't think you're going to survive because I think that the Me Too movement has been hijacked by uh, a lot of racist white people who want to use it to destroy black men, a lot of bitter women who want to use the bitter chick revenge stick and basically use the Me Too movement to go and accuse anybody of anything. I, so I think that it's kind of going to probably die on its own. But let's make a few rules as we move forward because those there are those of us out here who really believe that, you know, that rape is wrong, assault is wrong, and harassment is wrong. Like, you know, if the girl, if, if, you know, if you holler at a woman and ask her out and she says no a couple of times, you're going to have to start, you know, realizing no means no. And now where that becomes complicated is that sometimes there's some, you hear stories all the time where, you know, a woman didn't say yes to the fifth time, you know, but we, those days are gone. We can't have those days where a man pursues a woman passionately until she finally decides to go out with him. Those romantic stories are now dead. Uh, smart men are going to know that no means no. And if you say no to me, you say no. And I, but I've always known that. I mean, in my mind, it was like, if you say no to me once, I'm done. I'm, I'm not going to ask you again because I assume a grown ass woman knows what she wants. And uh, then that happened to me one time when I was in my 20s. There was a girl that I asked and I and it took me a long time to, to work up the energy, to, to work up the, the nerve to talk to girls. I didn't know how to talk to girls. And, and I remember I took my time and I was like, OK, how do I approach her? How do I approach her? And finally, I approached her and I said, you know, I think you and I should should date. And I wasn't even talking about like get together. Let's get together, girl. Let's do this. I was thinking like relationship like that. I was so I was so square, so corny. And I was like, I think that, you know, we should, you know, I could be your boyfriend. And I think that we'd make a great couple because blah, 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 blah. And I gave her a list of reasons, all of that. 
And she said, no, she basically started explaining why it wouldn't work and blah, 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 blah. And I'm listening and she was a smart lady, very educated. So I just assumed no really meant no. I assumed she wasn't interested. So I said, okay, you know, no problem. I right, know, and I'm embarrassed, right? Cause I don't, I never wanted to make a woman uncomfortable. That to me, it was never something I ever wanted to do. So I, I said, okay, no problem. You know, it's, it's totally fine. So then about two weeks later, some, one of her friends comes to me and I'm not going to say her name because I'm, I'm not going to bring her name out. But, but her friend comes to me and says, well, why did you date? Let's call her Tiffany. They're like, well, why did you ask out Tiffany? And I was like, because I did. I already explained to her. I tried to, you know, let her know that I liked her and blah, blah, blah. And she said, no. And do you know what she said? Check this out. She said, um, oh, she likes you. She just wanted to know if you were serious or not. So I was like, so you mean she was telling me no just as a test? I didn't know nothing about all that. I thought no meant no. So, so my feeling was, I'm not going. I'm not gonna ask again. If I ask you a direct question, I expect a direct answer. I'm not gonna. No, we're we're not doing that again. Like th that door has been shut. And honestly, as corny as that is, I know <laughs> Pink Nasa says it would die with you, corny, but we love you. Yeah, I'm proud to be corny. I'm I'm proud of exactly who I am. It, it, nerdy and all like whatever I am I am that guy and I can't change that person so fucking I'm not gonna try but it was like it's like I think that as corny as that was that actually was is the right approach I think for men now I really believe that I believe that you know you live in a world now that if you ask her out once and she says no and you ask her out twice she could go back and tell people that you are a predator because you harassed her. And, and, and if you are a person that's got something to lose, like you are the CEO of a major corporation, you got you know $20 million in the bank, you have a great career with, with a great stellar reputation. If she gets mad enough at you, she could twist that story into whatever she wants it to be and destroy you and embarrass you in front of your family and ruin everything that you work for. That's very scary and it's not fair. We know that, but life ain't fair. So men got to be careful with that. And women got to understand what men are dealing with so that, you know, maybe you can find ways to alleviate that. Black men need black women. We need strong black women to protect us. We need strong women who understand that there's a difference between a predator and a rapist and a guy who just thinks that you have a nice booty, you know, or the guy who, the, you know, the, the, the guy at the front desk who, who every now and then makes a little comment about how good you look in the dress. Yeah, it might get on your nerves, whatever, but you know the difference between, usually you can tell just in a man that you need to worry about and a man who's just harmless. You're like, oh, he's 72 years old. He ain't gonna do nothing. His dick probably don't even work no more. That's what real women say, right? Whereas white women are like, oh my God, I was traumatized. And then he told me that he'd like to see me naked and it just, bother me and I was throwing up and I was suicidal and like like that's what they do they, they they do that whole cupcake thing where you act like you know a man telling you that he wants to get with you is somehow like it, like like literally like he raped you like no it's not the case right so I so I tend to really have a lot of love and respect and I and a, and a, and a sense of protection for those women that are just strong in the community, like, you know, like when I was thinking about like, what kind of woman I wanted to be with, because y'all know, y'all know all about, about Dr. Alicia, y'all know how much I love that woman. And, and I just told her, I said, I appreciate the fact that you got some common motherfucking sense. You know, I appreciate the fact, like all she's like, she, her position is like, I need you to protect me and I need you to respect me, you know, and all these things. But, but, you know, but she's like, she's like, yeah, if a man, if a man, touches you, you know, where he ain't supposed to touch you, you smack him, you know, like, like you know, or, or if a man saying something that's out of line, you let him know, look, you need to quit. And another thing about this stuff too, that's interesting is the feminists are the first ones to tell you that you don't need a man, that toxic masculinity is bad, get him out of there. You know, he messed up, get him out of the household. You're better off without him, blah, blah, blah. But they don't understand the connection between men not being in the household and sexual predators being able to prey on the weak. Like R, the R. Kellys and people like that, you know, the way they get into people's houses a lot of times is because there's not a strong 
male figure in the house. That, so that same toxic masculinity that they're discrediting and they're equating to uh, predatory behavior is the same toxic man, so-called toxic masculinity that protects your children from a goddamn R. Kelly who's coming in there trying to have sex with your daughter. Because I, I mentioned that earlier today. I said, R. Kelly would never have gotten near my sister, nowhere near my sister. R. Kelly's, R. Kelly would have come up missing if he had tried to mess with my sister. Why? Well, because my father had guns and he wasn't scared to use them. My father didn't play that stuff. He was a real man. But I'm going to tell you this too. My father would have been labeled as um, being filled with toxic masculinity. He probably pisses off every feminist that he meets because he says what's on his mind. But he's also, uh, he's also definitely the, a person where the good far outweighs the bad. And we were very happy to have a strong protector in our household. You know, and so don't let these people fool you into their nonsense. Amanda Seals, unfortunately, she's been brainwashed. She's been brainwashed no worse than the little girls living up in R. Kelly's house. She's been brainwashed, except instead of the, you know, being held captive by R. Kelly, she's being held captive by white people. That's what she's that's what she's dealing with. If you're on Instagram, I'll bring you guys right back. So let me let me hit this button again. You know, Amanda Seals is as brainwashed as as the R. Kelly chicks or anybody else because she somehow believes all the nonsense that white people have been feeding her. And she thinks that this, this toxic predatory feminism is one of the solutions for black people, that these are true allies to black people. And they're not allies for black people. They, 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 I, ha I don't feel safe around the predatory feminists. I don't feel that they have my best interests at heart. I feel like they would rather see me dead or I feel like they would rather see men like me in prison. And, um, and, and so, you know, it is what it is. Let me um, look at a couple of your comments. Let's see, Ali the Sag, my girlfriend, wife to be, did the same to a co worker. I loved it. I'm a good black man in Vegas. Okay, y'all are here talking to each other again. Let me see. <laughs> I hope I meet a man like you, Dr. Boyce. What a good place. What's a good place to meet a good black man? You might want to come to the All Black National Convention. And I'm dead serious when I say that. I told, I told a, a young lady I mentor that too. I said, the men that come to the convention are usually very strong men. Like, we attract those men that are like, similar to the men in the nation of Islam, just, you know, they respect women. They're, they're, they're not punks. Uh, they, they believe in intelligence. They're, they're working to become economically strong. They're not into the bullshit. So, um, you know, I think the convention's a great place. I think that, um, you know, I, I don't know about play. I, I can't really say one way or the other about church all the time because you have some good men in church, some bad men. Um, I don't think you meet great men at the club or great women at the club unless you want to hang out with somebody who wants to go to the club you know, all the time. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, so, so meet people, maybe um, even online dating, I don't think is that bad. I think you just got to think through like what you're looking for. I, I actually tried online dating like 18 years ago. I, I can't do it. I, you know, I, I mean, obviously in like the last 15 years, I couldn't do it because I was too out there and people would, have, you know, kind of recognize me. But before I was recognizable, I tried online dating and it wasn't bad. One day I'll just do a video about online dating because I think there's um, interesting uh, thoughts I have about that. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go. Uh, do me a favor. Please hit the, um, okay, Jacksonville, Florida for the convention. No, it's either going to be in Birmingham or Los Angeles. Um, I'll let you guys know as soon as I find out. I hope you'll consider coming. It's really a great experience. It's a great, almost like a family reunion. You're going to definitely love it. If you've been to the All Black National Convention, just say something, uh, or if you've seen it or watched the recordings of it, say something about it so other people will know how great it is. Uh, because it really is an amazing black experience. So um, anyway, I'm going to get on out of here. Uh, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button before you go. Uh, please hit that thumbs up button. Also, if you want to get a text message when I go live, please text the word voice to 31996, B-O-Y-C-E, text voice to 31996. Uh, last but not least, if you want to check out our financial flashcards for children or our financial workbooks for children, uh, you got kids, you want to educate them on wealth and things like that, go to uh, financialworkbooks.com. That's financialworkbooks.com. And uh, and uh, Cold World says, make me a mod. Man, I don't even know you, but you know what? I'm feeling I'm feeling feeling good today. So I think I'm gonna go ahead. I'm, uh, I wish I could make you a mod. I can't. I can't. And I will explain why, but I can't. But next time, just ask me again, I, and I, I'll make you a mod. All right. And thank you, Dual Victory, who is the super mod, who is uh, the moderator of all moderators. And she's always in. She's always got our back. Um, so we're out of here, guys. Have a good night. We love you, and uh, we'll see you soon. So stay black, y'all.